All right, guys, now I know you've learned a lot of information so far, but this next lesson, number seven on trading strategies is gonna be jam-packed full of information that we're gonna take everything we've learned today and in, in the last few lessons, and we're going to apply this to find actual trading setups using some of the specific strategies that I and Kristen use on a daily basis in the trading room. So without further ado, let's jump right in to discuss some of these. All right, welcome to lesson seven on trading strategies. Now this lesson is gonna be jam packed full of information and just take, take the information in slowly and take some time to learn it and apply it in your own time. And I just wanna say that these strategies are not the be all end all. They're, you're most likely going to pick and choose which strategies fit best with your trading style. They don't have, you don't have to trade exactly the way that I'm about to teach you, but it's a good stepping stone. I'm just trying to teach you some tools to add to your toolbox on strategies that I use on a daily basis when I'm day trading that consistently make me profitable, at least get me into trades that have a high probability of working, that have a good risk reward. And um, in order to recognize these trading strategies and these trading setups, you're gonna have to put in a lot of consistent screen time you're gonna have to keep learning and applying this on a daily basis. If you don't do that, if you decide to trade only once a week um, and you're not very knowledgeable at the beginning, um, there's more than likely that you won't see much progress. So you gotta really work hard and study this, this stuff I'm about to teach you. And also please, please don't hesitate to ask myself or Kristen any questions about any of these trading strategies or just trading in general, we'll be more than happy to clarify anything for you. So we're here to help you. So disclaimer, of course, this is all for educational purposes. Um, futures and forex trading is risky. So just make sure if you are trading, we're not liable for any of your losses and make sure you're trading with money that you can afford to lose that won't cause any significant financial damage to your personal situation. So it's a typical disclaimer that we have to have in our videos. So first let's talk about a big topic that always comes up. People ask us, where should my stop go and how big should it be? And those are two of kind of the same question because you need to know how much you're risking. Um, and it, the stop loss where you're placing it is based on each specific trade. It's not always the same. Sometimes the risk could be more, sometimes it could be less, just depends on what the market is doing. But typically, based on the VIX or the volatility, these are the, the size of stops that I personally use on the ES or the NASDAQ. So for low volatile markets, which we haven't seen in quite some time, when the VIX is below 20, I like using about eight ticks or two points on the ES. And then NASDAQ about uh, 20 ticks or five points so that equates to about, if you're using the minis, it's about a hundred bucks per trade. So that's what I typically risk in low volatile markets and medium volatile markets when VIX is between 20 and 40, you might even be able to move this up to 50. Um, but for ES, I would trade a stop loss of about four points and the NASDAQ about 10 points. So it's about a $200 risk with a mini. And then when we get into the high vol higher volatile, volatile markets when the VIX is over 40 or over 50 or more like we did see in the past several weeks due to the coronavirus pandemic uh, this is when you're really gonna have to have wider stops because the price is whipping around extremely violently and for ES typically risk anywhere from 300 to 350 dollars or 250 to 350 dollars so that's about five to seven points and the same on uh nasdaq where it's around 15 to 20 points that's actually about 350 to 400 dollars per trade for a mini but thankfully the micros have been able to solve this problem if you have a smaller account or if you don't want to risk that much per trade you simply just scale down using less contracts if you normally can trade the mini in this kind of volatile market or you can use micros to scale down. Uh, say you only can have a $100 stop loss in that type of volatile market. So you can use two or three micros 
and you'll be able to reach uh, meet that risk criteria just fine. So the training strategy process, and this applies to everything I'm about to teach you. And if you just do this day in and day out, this is the exact process that I, I myself go through when I'm trying to look for a trade. And Kristen does the same exact thing. So step number one, we are looking to identify the trend in the, in the market structure. So are we in an uptrend or are we in a downtrend? And how do you identify that? Well, for identifying the sentiment of the market structure, you simply look at whether we're making higher lows or higher highs, or making, that would be bullish, or we're making lower lows and lower highs, that would be bearish. And then you look to take trades in the direction of that overall market structure. Number two, we wanna identify a good price level or a zone where we, we might see a strong reversal or rejection so where we can actually set up a trade that has a high probability of working and it's worth the risk uh, for the reward that we might get out of it. Number three, this is where a lot of people might struggle is you have to have the patience to wait for price to actually hit that level after you did all the analysis. A lot of people tend to enter in the middle of the freeway and don't have the patience to wait for the price to hit their level and that ends up taking you out of the market prematurely you might hit your stop loss for the day or you might just take an unnecessary loss without giving yourself a chance to see if that level you analyzed actually worked so number four we want to qualify that trade entry and what do i mean by that is we want to let price come into our zone or hit our level we don't want to just leave a blind order there in case it slices right through and stops us out we want to let the price stabilize around that area and start looking for reversal signs to enter the trade Number five, we want to manage the risk. Once we're in the trade, we want to manage the risk until we exit it, either by getting paid, getting paid by taking profit, getting stopped out for a loss, a small loss, or getting trailed out as you trail your stop as the trade is working in your favor for a small profit or hopefully a larger profit. Number six, you simply repeat this process over and over again, day in and day out, until it becomes a habit. So an example of bullish market structure. So as I mentioned, bullish market structure is denoted by a series of higher highs and higher lows. And if we take, if we just look at this chart of the ES, the S&P 500 futures, everything looks bearish here because we made a downtrend going into uh, Thursday night, into Friday morning. This is the Friday's price action for the day. And then once the cash market opened, we broke above that resistance and held this was even low. This was like a double bottom here. Here's the first higher low. Didn't quite clear this area yet, but it held this old resistance, new support. And we made a higher low here. And then what can you expect after that? We should make a higher high. And we made a higher high here, another higher low, higher high, higher low, and so on and so forth, because we are in an uptrend. So this day, you'd be looking to trade to the long side. Of course, you can switch sentiment to go short if you see something like this and you see a reversal signal, but trading against the trend is I don't recommend doing that. It's called fading. Unless you have more experience and more screen time, feel comfortable doing that. Um, so for now, once you identify the main market structure, you should trade in that direction. Let's take a look at an example of bearish market structure. So inverse to bullish market structure, we actually have in bearish market structure, we have lower lows and lower highs. So first, we do have a higher low here. You can see that market structure. And we had a little bit of an uptrend here. And then once it broke, we had our high here. Then we had a lower high form here. And then we broke this support. Had a lower low form here from this guy. And then a higher or a lower high form from that guy. And you can just see that each successive new low, new low, new high, new lower high, that rejected there. And I believe that's the overnight London action. And the trend just continued down because we kept making lower lows and lower highs. So this day you'd want to look to take shorts until you see a reversal signal of some sort, like in this area. We had some higher lows form there. 
but essentially it was just a flag to continue down to the downside. So this is an example of bearish market structure. Something that you should be doing on a daily basis before the market opens is identifying strong levels that or zones that act as support or resistance because we need to know where where we think that price has a high chance of holding or rejecting so we can set up a high probability trade to catch the move uh, in the direction that we're trading. So how do you actually draw these levels for supports? I typically draw horizontal lines or, but lately I've been really enjoying zoning the chart as opposed to just drawing one line because it covers the actual market structure before to the left. So it's not just one line. So it gives you a little bit more room to see how price reacts around the previous level. And how we draw these, these zones or levels, we simply just want to connect previous highs that rejected or at least form similar highs. In this, for example, in this area, we had two highs here that acted as resistance. And then once we broke above it, that now becomes support. So we can just extend the level this way. And you can see eventually price came down to here and bounced just above our zone. And as price continues to go up, we just keep drawing new supports, new zones. Here's the bull flag we broke up. So this top area should be support. And you can see here it held as support and then so on and so forth until we hit some resistance. And uh, clearly once we sold there down to support again, because this low rejected here, we rejected here and then finally bounced up. And when price comes back there, we actually held that area until we did not, as we made lower lows and lower highs down to our other zones. So it's pretty simple. It takes a lot of practice and repetition to get this down, to train your eyes, to see uh, where the supports and where the resistance are. So it's really like drawing trend lines. You wanna connect similar tops and similar lows, and then extend it across either by a line or a rectangle to give yourself an idea of where that strong support and resistance is. And you don't have to label them on different colors, but it does help once price is below a certain level or zone, you can have it colored as red. And if it's below, you could have it colored as green to signify uh, selling or buying, but that's completely up to you. And this is the 60 minute chart. So like I mentioned quite a few times in this course so far, patterns and market structure in the stock market, it's fractal. So what does that mean? It, the same types of patterns and market structure that form can be seen across all time frames and different types of chart data, even on tick charts and range bars. So if this, this is a 60 minute, once we have a longer time frame of our zones, we can actually zoom into this, the five minute to clean up the zones and, the, and our levels a little bit better because as a day trader, you're trading off shorter time frames. unless you're more of a swing trader, you like to hold your trades a little bit longer, but even then you still draw your major support and resistances on a longer time frame or drawing fibs, but we'll cover that in a little bit later in this video. And then you can see how I added two more levels here for the day trading that we would want to pay attention to, which is this area right here. There was a gap down and we came back up. Price rejected that gap and then sold back down to our support. If we look all the way to the left here, we have a low here and we had a break up here. So that is acting as support until it's not. So you can pretty much say, if we don't hold this level, we're coming down to this next support here. And just above, we have a lot of resistance right here where it used to be support is now resistance. So again, just to repeat, we draw the, the levels or the zones, depending on your preference, on the longer time frames, and then overlay them and tighten them up a little bit more in detail on the shorter time frames, just so we can see the market structure a little bit better. So we have clear levels and zones where we're going to be waiting for price to reach so we can look for potential trade. Anything you take in the middle here is considered 
the middle of the freeway unless you're trading on a very tight time frame and you can see the trend like here it's down and you know uh you can recognize good opportunities with the trend then it's okay to trade in that sense but as a beginner trader i would wait for your solid levels before you start thinking about taking a trade 